What's up, everybody? It's Tuesday, and that means it's time for Quickfire Comic Talk, Episode 4. Uh, so, I've been waiting to talk about this book for quite some time, so I'm excited, so you should be excited. Um, at the last discussion that we had with the Kinda Funny Comic Group on Facebook, which you should join, we had talked about all of our favorite books, and I had recently read, and I finished it last week, High Crimes. And I want to talk about this book today because it really had a huge impact on me. Obviously, I loved it very much. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and review it. We're going to talk about it. So I'm going to get into minor spoilers, but I don't think I'm going to go deep enough to make it um, non-readable or ruin it for anybody because I really want people to experience this. Um, so just off the basic facts, this was published by our guys at Dark Horse, and it was written by Christopher Zimpella, Zibella. And Abraham Mustafa, Mustafa, woo, the Lion King reference right there. If you don't get it, go watch Lion King, Mustafa, woo. Anyway, so um, this book I randomly picked up at my comic book store that just opened up down the street from my house. I got a ton of them, but I wanted to go check out this store. Plus, I needed boards and bags for all the stuff I've been coming up on recently. And I walked in there, and there was a big old sign saying, join our book club. And I was like, ooh, book club. I like talking about books with people, as I do. And so uh, they said that this was the book of the month. The guy said high crimes. And the gentleman behind the table said uh, he enjoyed it and that I should go ahead and give it a shot, I believe. And so I said, okay, I will buy that from you, sir. Uh, I don't know why I decided to just start reading it instantly. Uh, I had a while to read it. I didn't need to read it right away in order to get it done before the book club. But I'm, I'm really glad I did. So I'd like to give you the basic plot and premise, and it's crazy, so check it out. So here is the main underarching storyline. Once again, this is not spoilers. You find out most of this information within the first pages of the book. So the story focuses around a woman named Suzanne, who actually at one point in her life was an Olympic snowboarder, and she was one of the best, right? She was a kick-ass snowboarding chick. Anyway... She had a big problem. She was addicted to drugs and alcohol. And uh, in the Olympics, they could pretty much test you for all that stuff whenever they want. Well, guess what? She gets tested and she gets thrown out of the Olympics. Boo-hoo, right? She's kind of has to, like, leave that life behind, you know? Because, I mean, how much shame is that, having to face your parents and your friends? You had this awesome gift and you threw it away because of, you know, something as trivial as, as drugs and alcohol. But, I mean, it's a very familiar story. I mean, unfortunately... You see that happen with people all the time. Everyday life, athletes, musicians, everybody fucks it up because of that stuff. But anyway, I digress. Um, she decides that she has to do something that she's good at, and because she's been snowboarding her entire life, she has been in high altitudes. For all you don't know, the higher in altitude you are, the thinner the air is, which means that over time, your lungs will what's called acclimate, to those, um, to those heights, to that elevation. And because she spent a lot of time snowboarding, she's got great lung capacity. She decides to take up a job as what's called a Sherpa. A Sherpa is like a mountain guide who will take you up to high places. And she takes it as a job to one of the most craziest places on Earth, Mount Everest. Don't climb Mount Everest. You can't do it. You'll die. Trust me. Uh, so, anyway, uh, she decides to go up there. Turns out that being a Sherpa doesn't pay very well at all. Like, the, the, the money is crappy compared to the risk that you, you, you do. I mean, every time you go up there, you could possibly die. And so she joins in cahoots with a, a friend and kind of like a fatherly-like figure to her, a gentleman named Haskell. So you have Suzanne and Haskell. Basically, what they do is they take tours up to Mount Everest, but here's where it gets kind of, like, creepy a little bit. So let's say they take a group of people up, and one of them just so happens to fall and die. They don't actually report it when they come back down. What they do is they take the person's possessions, like let's say their driver's license, the wallet, and they cut off their right hand. The hand on the front of the cover, right? This isn't a spoiler. You find this out right away. And the reason why they take their hand is because when they get back down, what they'll do is they'll put that hand and the person's possessions on ice. And in, let's say, like a year, a two years, what they'll do is they'll contact the relatives 
and they'll say, hey, we found a part of your family member and some of his possessions. If you would like us to send that to you, we want you to pay us around oh, $10,000, $20,000. It just depends upon how rich the family was. To make a long story short, they are high altitude grave robbers. And this is a terrible thing. These are the main characters of the story, mind you. These are not good people. Um, but this kind of backs, this backfires on him, right? This works out for him for years. Um, it's able to feed Suzanne's drug addiction, Haskell's dreams. They all live pretty large in, in a really loose, free kind of lifestyle because of all this income they're making from this shit. But basically what happens is, is a gentleman had gone up to Mount Everest who had one time worked for an agency. Those agencies you don't want to work for or fuck with. He was a government agent in some branch of agency that used to clean up the trash, right? He was a covert classified assassin. He would go and kill people and blow up places and do the things that no other agent would do. This guy died on Mount Everest and for reasons unknown, I'm not gonna get into how he found his way up there or why he was up there at all because that's a major spoiler. But they find him and they decide to cut off his hand, take his possessions. Well. When they go back down, how they find out who these people are is with their hand, right? With their fingerprints. But as soon as they scan this guy's fingerprints in to find out who he is, it sets off a beacon. It turns out that agency was looking for him and wanted to kill him and everything and everyone around him for reasons unknown. No spoilers. So what ends up happening is it turns into this massive uphill chase of fucking Mount Everest. These guys have fucking handguns and full functional weapons. They're assassins chasing these two mountain climbers who are just happened to be grave robbers up Mount Everest. I mean, it is exciting, man. This book has drama. It has action. It has suspense. It has mystery. It is like the best book I've read this year by far. And if you're not reading it, you're doing something wrong. Um, so... Another reason why this affected me was, we've, we've hit on this before, is relatable characters. We kind of discussed this um, last week on the Kind of Funny Facebook group, which you should be a part of. And we had talked about, what book was it? It was uh, Sex Criminals. We had talked about Sex Criminals, how we had a big connection with like Susie and John, who were the main characters. I'm not trying to get your characters you know, confused here with this book and, and that. But um, they, they were relatable. At least uh, we had agreed that Susie was. And that's really important here, too. The, this is a story about addiction, you know? This is a story about drama. This is a story about failure. This is a story about fucking human beings, you know? We are not all perfect. And the reason why I like this book as well is, is just for that reason, the relatability. Not every book you can read can be about a guy who has superhuman strength, the ability to fly, and wears a suit of armor that can plow through walls. You know what I mean? Like, th th it has to be some realistic for me, personally, sometimes. If, if that's not your jam, I totally understand. But for me, when I get, like, really just, like, into a book, it's because I really relate to these characters. Now, saying that... And also, the dialogue and the writing in this, I mean, Christopher Sabella, like, does an excellent job with the dialogue. The way these people communicate to each other, the way they treat each other, the way they act is so human, and it is so natural. There is no fakeness about this, no punny one-liners, no little bubbles making you go, oh, what are they thinking? This is, like, into the very depths of the main characters, Suzanne and Haskell. I mean, like, he, they couldn't have done a better job with how they personally communicate back and forth and how Suzanne tells her story. She tells her story in an intimate way, as if she is thinking about it in her own mind, but in a natural way, not in a, like, storytelling kind of way. Sometimes, like, when they do the whole, like, thinking out loud thing, they do a setup where, like, at least in comics, where they, they try to basically tell you the story of what's going on through their thoughts, and it, and it just, just doesn't seem realistic. Like, normal people don't think like that. But in this book, it's delivered really well. The artwork in it is great. It's very straightforward. It doesn't pop out at you and go, oh my gosh, look at this, you know? Um, but, you know, just, just showing you a piece... You can kind of see her hanging off the side of the cliff. A lot of grays, blacks, and whites. You know, they're on a freaking mountain half the time. So, you know, hey, what do you expect? But I liked it. 
the face, the, the way that they make these facial animations, it's, it's crazy. I mean, this book I could not speak highly for. And uh, higher... <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a hard time talking all of a sudden. I'm looking through it. Anyway, here's how I feel about this book. I don't give out one stars or five stars just you know, casually. If you see my, you know, reviews that I do, usually it's between the two and the four. And the reason why is because I feel very strongly about two things. Hate is a powerful word. Love is also a powerful word. This is the first book that I've read in a long time that I could comfortably say I'm going to give five stars to. I love this book. Um, if you're interested in picking it up, I highly do recommend doing so. It is a self-contained story, so you don't have to really, you know, depend or worry about this being like a huge over arc thing that you're going to have to, you know, devote the rest of your life to. It's about 210 pages or so. It's a one and done, wham, bam, thank you, man kind of book. You know what? I think you have to read this book. I don't think that even just comic book fans should read this book. I think everybody should read this book. Murder, mystery, suspense, action drama. I mean, what more do you need? This is it. So that's it. That's High Crimes. I absolutely loved it. Thank you for uh, joining the Quickfire Comic Talk, Episode 4. It's Tuesday. Get excited. Go buy High Crimes. High Crimes. You're all wonderful. If you like what you've seen, please like, please subscribe, uh, and join the Kind of Funny Facebook group. And I'm Garrett Anderson. You guys have a wonderful Tuesday. I'm out.